Hello everybody and welcome back to Ethelore Plays Go. Today we're going to be talking about some more general concepts of the game. So last time we talked about life and death and reing, and that's a very technical and uh, not necessarily difficult, well it can get pretty difficult, but it's more of a technical kind of lecture. Whereas here we're talking more about general strategy and um, just some general concepts to help you understand the game a little bit better. Um, so I have a couple of shapes that I want to share. So we'll start with the first one. Uh, in this first one, I want to talk about connection. So in Go, um, there's a general idea that if you're connected with your own stones, then you're strong. And if you separate your opponent's stones, then they are weaker, and therefore you are strong. Um, so it's important that you don't get totally disconnected. So here, uh, for example, we have black stones. We might have seen the shape a little bit already based on some previous games, but um, say that it's black to play, uh, where should black play? Often I find that players will completely miss this f5 uh, move here, um, like this. Um, playing here is pretty important to stop white from breaking through. Black has a lot of cutting points on the outside, so say over here. Um, so white might be able to cut and capture, but this is still better than letting white come through completely. So say we play something play somewhere elsewhere on the board and letting white play through here. This gives black what's called broken shape. And this is a textbook bad shape. And you want to avoid this at all costs. Um, so this is just something that I wanted to show. What would be a little bit better for black, if, if we could, is to... Well, we, couldn't, we can't remove stones from the game. But if we're black right now, then obviously connecting is quite important. Because letting white have this e5 move is so painful. Gen uh, or uh, analogously, say we have a knight's move between uh, black stones. Uh, where does black want to play now? Similarly, black wants to block white. Say white comes through here. We might still, you know, create this pinwheel shape right here. But um, this is more what we're looking for rather than playing away and let white letting white come through the shape here. So this is also textbook broken shape. And even... Um, even like in when I'm do, reviewing games of people who aren't complete beginners, um, they're still like say double digit Q or something. There, uh, I need to teach them uh, this broken shape and to avoid it. This is not good shape, and it'd be good if you started avoiding it or looking for it in your games right away. Um, otherwise, yeah. So uh, an, an example is in a five stone handicap game. So when, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can have handicap stones, and often uh, I'll be playing as white. So often the starting point for white is at e3. So what, it's not immediately clear what black should do. Black has so many stones on the board, it can be a bit disorienting. So generally, once again, we want to think about the theme of connection and of, um, of separation. So this e, e4 stone is threatening to come through at, I, at these two points here, so a or b. So that means that black might think, uh, not this one, might think, oh, well, I'll keep my stones connected and keep strong. Uh, white might come through at F, uh, F5, and then normally black's idea will be to push. But if you push, then it will create this bad shape here. This is the broken shape that I was discussing before. And, in, and also, if you come from the other side, you will also get this bad shape. So, okay, what's black to do? Um, already we're starting to come to some uh, more advanced concepts. So maybe we'll play somewhere like uh, h5. That still keeps these three stones connected. And um, although the connection between a and b isn't quite as strong, if white tries to come through, then black can still keep their connection. You can see here. Um, meanwhile, white doesn't have any eyes yet. Um, so in this case, white will probably die promptly. Um, this is just a showcase that the five stone handicap on a nine by nine board is overwhelmingly strong. Um, so if you know general things like this, then you can already move up beyond that, which means that you've already moved a little bit beyond the beginner stage. Um, let's see, I think I showed the knight's move, but this move also works. Uh, this move also works similarly. Say white plays here, then maybe the connection between A and B isn't as strong. Um, but then the connection between B and C is stronger. So sometimes you have to weigh out the pros and cons of different shapes by reading. So for instance, if you had played the knight's move instead, you might think, oh, well, what if white attaches? Then uh, black will try and come through, 
And then say that white tries to keep black separated because that's really important. So keeping A and B separated. Then what black might do is just say, okay, well, I'll play this Atari. White will come out, Atari come out. And this creates what's called a ladder um, where black can just keep playing and white will be forced to the edge of the board. So already here, black will have to read out what the result of this ladder is and then play accordingly. Um, there can also be variations in the ladder, so say that uh, we play it this way, or uh, let's see, are there other ways to play this ladder? Um, if black plays this way, then white escapes, because white now has three liberties. And uh, say black plays here, then there's Atari here, the game continues. I, I think it'd still be okay for black, but um, yeah, this is already a little bit more complicated. So. This is basically all I wanted to show about shape and connection. Let's see, is there anything else? No, not really. Yeah, here, as I mentioned, yeah, we already covered this. So now I'll come to this idea about, and now that we have an idea about connection and disconnection and reading, let's have an idea about speed. So here, black plays three stones next to each other. So here we see three stones and each stone has, or not, well, this group of stones has eight liberties. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So what happens now if we put some spaces in between them? You can see now that black has what's called a one-point jump. So one point jump to e5 and another one to g5. So we can see that black is able to move a little bit more quickly across the board. And also, say that we put instead of one space, two spaces. Well, black can al already cover a lot more, a lot more ground with fewer stones. This comes to the idea of like efficiency, that you can use uh that you can use stones um, in a very solid, slow, heavy way, or in a fast, light, um, flexible kind of way. And there's a balance that you want to, to create between the two. Within Go, we're always talking about having the ideal moves. And, I, and with the idea of idealness comes the idea of like the perfectly balanced speed, density, um, this kinds of thing. So you don't want moves that are too close together because then they'll be too slow and you don't want moves that are really spaced far apart because then the connection between your stones will be a little bit difficult to draw so for instance here let's say white uh uh yeah white comes in between here what happens well black and atari and connect and then white might be able to come here but uh although white was able to successfully separate black stones it creates a fight um and that's not very clear about who who uh, who got the better. Whereas if the stones are further apart, say white comes in between, then it's a lot more difficult to keep the connection between the stones. So although black was able to capture the stone here, there was broken shape on the other side. Um, so generally, uh, this e6 move isn't the best move to connect. But then if you choose other moves, then it seems that white is very easily able to keep a and b separated. And so we can see how having the more space in between stones means that it's easier for white to come in between and separate. Whereas if we keep them closer together, or even really, really close together, like here it's just impossible. And then here, white can try and separate, but it will be at a cost. Um, so, okay, now we have an idea about speed, connection, disconnection. Let's talk a bit about the shape of stones. So, like I mentioned, we can put stones that are close together, and they'll create a very strong shape. But what happens now if instead of playing uh, at A to create a straight line, we play at B? Well, you, you, what you might notice is that we have this triangle shape, and this F6 stone uh, is a liberty that's shared by both A and B. And this creates, once again, inefficiency, because um, white can just take one stone uh, to, fill, to fill two liberty. Or, well, it's one liberty, but it's fill the liberty of two separate stones. And so if you create shape that's uh, dense enough, then that can put you at risk of being captured because it's easier to lose all of your liberties. So a better move would be to say, okay, I'm going to take black uh, and we'll play a one, one space uh, jump further away. So already this creates a little bit more efficiency in black shape. Say that white comes in, then black can connect. But hold on, isn't this the same shape as before? Um, and the difference is that white is here, and so now it's not an empty liberty. Black is wrapping around white with the shape that's well-connected and that radiates influence on the rest of the board. So 
uh, over on here. Of course, the idea about influence is a bit weird when we're on such a small board. But as you move up onto boards, like 13 by 13, 19 by 19 especially, then the idea of the strength of your stones radiating that strength across the board is more important. Um, very quickly, what that might mean is, say, so white plays a stone here, the black is able to easily surround white because black already has uh, black already has some stones in the area. Um, and what that means is that um, white is weaker in this area. So uh, we can think of even more dense shape. Let's say we fill the shape not with a white stone, but with a black stone. Then we have what's called a dumpling. Or even more heavy would be this B2 bomber, where uh, this is like some of the most dense shapes you can create in Go. They're so... They're so inefficient and put together um, that they're just, they're really, they're a really bad sign if they ever appear on the board. For instance, if you're reviewing games and you find shapes like this, then you want to ask yourself, oh, is there a way how I could prevent this? Or what caused this? Or was making this shape worth it based on the overall situation? Um, so, okay, so we have some idea about sh uh, heavy shape. Um, so an another idea of better shape is this table shape here. So now, once again, it's, it might be okay to like move, extend one space, but then you want to start jumping and jumping again. Um, and this creates shape that uh, is, it has the potential to make eyes. So in here, this E5 stone that's in the center, um, I remember some, some, uh, some teachers like to call it like a fruit that's growing in a flower. It's, it's, uh, it gives you some strength, it gives you some points, and uh, you're not filling it in. Whereas... Uh, with a shape like, like the B2 Bomber, can you see any fruit, any eyes, any spaces anywhere? No. So this is not what we want. Um, and having shapes that have space in the center where the stones are separated, uh, but not too separated, not too far away, because then their relationship to each other deteriorates. This is the balance that we want to strike and go. Um, so that's already a lot that we covered today. We covered ideas about... Um, Connection, disconnection, speed, um, shape. Ah, one thing that I also want to mention very quickly is that in a game of Go, we also have an idea about um, whoever plays first. Um, so say black plays first. I mean, black always plays first. Then black uh, get, then white being the player that goes second uh, gets a couple of points because they go second. Um, this is a way to offset, uh, offset the advantage that black has. And this is called Komi. So on a 5x5 five five board, we might give 5.5 or 6.5 points to white. And so when the game ends, if you remember the previous example, let's see if I can draw it up. Um, something like this. I think uh, in the previous example, white was black and black was white. But here, uh, remember, it was 32 points, I think. So 27 30, 32, yeah, 32 points for white, and then uh, 31 points for black. But white will also get an additional, depending on what error it's set, 5.5 or 6.5 points. So now, white's not just winning by 1 point, white's winning by 6.5 or 5.5 points. And the reason why we add that half point to the Komi is to make sure that there is no possibility of a draw. Say that both players have the same amount of points. So say that we, we fill in, let's say that Komi was 5.5, and a half, um, now let's say that white has somehow, um, so five and a half points removed. So now it's even, and then we get rid of Komi. So now white will still win, even though they have the same amount of points as black, I believe. No. Yes, because, yeah, we, we filled in a Komi, so that's why. Um, because here that would be 26 plus five is 32, 31. And then add half a point, white wins by half a point. Um, I forgot to add this into the file, and I was just about to wrap up before mentioning this, but yeah, now we are really able to really play a game of Go. Now we know like all the concepts, we know how to read, we know life and death. Um, we've really come so far. So in the next game, in the next uh, video, what I'll do is I'll cover things like uh, games I played with real people and try and correcting their mistakes so that you can already have a bit of an advantage when you start playing more. Um, Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy this content, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.